Nintendo puts a great deal into their stories and series and have shown that they will never stop building onto their iconic characters so long as we continue to love their creations. It's hard not to know who Mario is and the characters in his universe, especially the princess he always needs to rescue. Princess Peach may always need rescue, but an argument can be made that she is one of the most underrated characters of the Mario-verse. Did you know that apart from being a playable character in many games like Mario Party, Mario Kart, Mario Golf, and more, that Peach was in her own game? Not only that, but it had great reviews and has a fan community that is puzzled as to why a sequel has not been released. Today, we talk about Super Princess Peach. <laughs> Super Princess Peach is a single-player platform video game developed by Toast and published by, of course, Nintendo back in 2005 for the Nintendo DS. Toast, also known as Toast Software, is a Japanese game development company based out in Kyoto. They are known for several Dragon Ball games and for developing Nintendo's Game & Watch Gallery series. Super Princess Peach is actually the second time Princess Toadstool was the main character in a game, as she was first in Princess Toadstool's Castle Run game. It was a game watch released by Nintendo in 1990 where your objective is to dodge the Koopa Troopas as you make your way to the castle. But let's face it, Princess Peach deserved a real game. And that's where Super Princess Peach comes in. The game follows Peach in a role reversal as she must now be the one whom rescues Mario, Luigi, and the Toads who have been kidnapped by Bowser and taken to Vibe Island. Princess Peach investigates through eight worlds that all contain six levels and a boss fight inside the Vibe Island world map. Peach must also rescue three Toads in each level with the bosses having a Toad contained in a bubble. You must rescue all Toads to be able to beat the last boss Bowser. Bowser has not only kidnapped Mario, Luigi, and the Toads, but has also stolen the Vibe Scepter, which is a magical item capable of influencing emotions. The game revolves around emotions, given that the island and the scepter both have the word Vibe, which is a person's emotional state. Princess Peach is not alone as she adventures with her talking umbrella, Perry, given to her by Toadsworth. Princess Peach is able to trigger one of four Vibe abilities, Joy, Rage, Gloom, and Calm. These are shown as four colored heart panels on the bottom of the screen that each represent a different vibe which you must touch to trigger. To be able to use these abilities, you must have enough energy in the vibe gauge which is filled by collecting blue gems that are scattered around each stage. Joy makes Peach extremely happy and allows her to float and create a tornado. Fast music in a happy tone is played when activated. Rage makes Peach angry and catch fire, which lights up lamps, fuels hot air balloons, and the area around her. She can also stomp on the ground after a jump to shake the ground to stun enemies and set off switches. Gloom makes Peach become sad and cry, causing her to run faster. Her tears make water wheels go around that open hidden parts of the levels, and her tears can freeze cold surfaces to make them slippery, allowing her to get under tight spaces and her tears can also make plants grow for her to climb. Calm makes Peach chill and allows her HP to be restored while depleting the vibe gauge. This stops if her health reaches maximum or the gauge empties or if she's attacked by an enemy. Princess Peach's assistant Perry helps aid her in many ways throughout the adventure. Perry is able to eat most enemies to fill the vibe gauge and is also able to transform into different objects along the way. The bow brella makes Perry turn into a boat to get across water. The float brella allows Peach to float for a few seconds similar to her own floating ability. The pound brella allows you to ground pound to break blocks, stun enemies and move objects closer to Peach that can't normally be accessed. The charge brella allows Peach to charge Perry and fire an umbrella shaped charge power that travels a short distance to strike enemies and hit out of reach switches. The slide brella allows Perry to hook onto red ropes and slide onto them while keeping Peach protected. 
The Subrella turns Perry into a submarine to protect and transport Peach. The submarine shoots bubbles to defeat enemies, which can be triggered by blowing on the Nintendo DS's microphone. And lastly, the Dashbrella allows Peach to swing Perry to attack enemies while running and can be used consecutively while tapping a button without losing speed. The game has many obstacles and enemies, and these enemies can be classified as either viveless enemies or vibe enemies, whom have specific emotions just like Peach's powers. Super Princess Peach also has a glossary menu that shows a description of enemies that you defeat. There's three minigames that can be unlocked by playing through the course of the game. Toad Jump, Toad Toad, and Toad Shot. In Toad Jump, Toad runs and has to jump over his enemies to reach the end of the level. To do this, you must blow on the Nintendo DS's microphone and the longer you blow, the higher Toad jumps. In Toad Toad, you must use the Nintendo DS's stylus pen to drag Toad through one of 10 fiery environments without touching fire or spikes or running out of time. Each level gets increasingly more difficult. And lastly, Toad Shot, where you use the stylus once again but to shoot enemies to gain points in a certain time limit. Points can be lost if you accidentally shoot Mario or Luigi. There are 8 puzzles that can be assembled by collecting the puzzle pieces throughout the levels and purchasing them from the shop. The game also has a music room where you can listen to the game's soundtrack and some of Peach's voiceovers. This can be unlocked by finding or purchasing at least one soundtrack at the shop. Super Princess Peach was very successful. It received great reviews and has sold over 1 million copies worldwide. Numerous sites have placed the game on their list of top games that deserve a sequel, and debates have been made about Princess Peach being the most important iconic female Nintendo character. So where is the sequel? You would think that with the sales alone that Nintendo would have already released a sequel to Super Princess Peach, but sadly, they haven't even mentioned it. What they have done is leave hints and easter eggs leaving references to the sequel. In Super Princess Peach after each boss battle, Peach and Perry rest before going to the next level and during that resting period, Perry has a reoccurring dream that gives details about his past. It turns out that Perry was originally a human boy whom was taken from his grandfather and turned into an umbrella. He managed to escape the group who kidnapped him and used his magic to attract a traveling merchant toad who added him to his wares. This led to Toadsworth eventually meeting Perry and purchasing him from the merchant, which leads to Toadsworth eventually giving him to Peach. Nintendo showed that there's much more to Perry than meets the eye, and they seem to hint that the sequel would be about Peach helping Perry return to human form. This would have been a great idea as it would allow Peach to venture off on her own adventure without the need of Mario and Luigi. The sequel would of course have more emotions and more moves and allow Princess Peach to have a solid series. However, Nintendo left an easter egg that pretty much kills any hope for that specific sequel. While it may have seemed nice that Perry shows up as a trophy for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, it was definitely not nice to see him as a spirit in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This means that Nintendo decided that Perry's character is now dead and given the fact that it has been 17 years since the last game was released, it doesn't seem to be a series Nintendo wished to pursue. To add salt to the injury, there was also a controversy over what Nintendo's intentions were, with Ryan Davis from GameSpot saying, quote, there's something rather sexist about the idea that Princess Peach's big secret weapon is that she can get really overly emotional at the drop of a hat. Or, Bryn Williams from GameSpy asking if Nintendo was trying to say that all females were emos. It is unknown if these type of comments affected the development of any sequel. This is the unfortunate story of Super Princess Peach. There is a minigame that is playable during the intro sequence when Peach obtains Perry from Toadsworth. It can be replayed by holding R and pressing start. Famitsu created a manga called The Great Adventures of Peach based off the Super Princess Peach game. All the characters from the game including the bosses are in the manga. 
Peach, Toad, and Perry show up in many Famitsu magazines. That is it for today. But before you go, are you a Princess Peach fan? Do you feel that she doesn't get enough love in the Mario verse? How do you feel about a sequel? Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this at Game Circle TV.